Let's talk about travel. You did a great deal of it, yes, um, <clears throat> and much of it was um, was overseas. Um, what stands out in your mind? What do you think you'll remember the most in terms of the places you've been and the people you've met? Well, it's it's a large question that requires a, a large answer because uh, there are so many memorable uh, experiences because the travel has been quite varied. A lot of it has been within the Anglican Communion and then uh, much of it has been beyond the Communion as, as well. Uh, China will certainly stand out in my mind as uh, uh, just, uh, just a remarkable uh, phenomenon within uh, the worldwide Christian mission uh, that the church in China has reinvented itself and grown in leaps and bounds during the last uh, 20 years under a uh, sometimes oppressive um, socialist regime is uh, an enormous credit to the church and, and to the work of the spirit in China. And certainly I came back with uh, concepts that uh, were fundamental to that regeneration that I think could be of some real value to us uh, here in, in North America. Uh, my visits to Cuba uh, have been uh, enormously important here again. Uh, we have a church, and in this case a, a small Anglican church, that is uh, uh, finding life and, uh, and vitality within a very strong socialist context. And uh, uh, that's, that's been a, a wonderful experience. I enjoy the Cuban people, their, uh, their faith, uh, their ingenuity at uh, making much of very little. Uh, so that, that's been a wonderful experience. Then in quite a different vein, I led a, an ecumenic or a church leaders uh, tour to Armenia as a guest of the Catholicus of all Armenians. Uh, Armenia is the oldest established church uh, in the world. Uh, more than 1,700 years ago, Armenia um, established Christianity as, as the religion of the nation. Uh, a lot of your travel, as you say, had to do with um, representing the Canadian Church in international and communion bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, Dromantine, there was Nottingham, uh, more recently there was Dar es Salaam. As you prepare to leave office, what would you say about the future of the Anglican Communion and our role in it? I must say that my first primates meeting in Dromantine, Ireland, uh, was uh, uh, a pretty discouraging experience, uh, in, in some ways almost a frightening experience, uh, to see the, the degree of uh, division uh, within the church as 14 of our 38 primates would not set foot in the chapel with the primate of Canada and the primate of the United States. Uh, that situation has, has changed very considerably. And my final meeting of the primates in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, um, there were still seven primates who were of that mind, uh, but, uh, but there was a much greater movement towards the center. And uh, within the global church, that's who we are as Anglicans. We're people of the center, the via media. That uh, incorporates a very wide spectrum of, uh, of belief and practice. And uh, here we are, an association of autonomous churches around the world uh, with some sense of interdependence and concern for one another, but, uh, uh, but within that very inclusive of a very broad spectrum of things. I hope that the Anglican Church will hold to that because it is a gift to the global church. Um, other churches are, are confessional or centrally determined and, and so on, but Anglicanism is uh, almost unique in uh, being that via media that is intentionally uh, inclusive and, and tolerant of such a, a breadth of views.